Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Kyle Lowry. Or should I say Dr. Kyle Lowry? Whoa! Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rivas, and uh, there's a talented person on the other side of me, uh, but I don't know his name. Who are you, sir? I am the producer. My name is Matt Duncan, and I am here having a great time. We've got a great episode coming up. How are you doing, Fred? I'm doing great. Yeah, we have a great episode. Um, we got uh, Matt Alexander Henry, who I went to high school with, amazing mm-hmm. stand up and a uh, uh, hardcore uh, you know, basketball fan. Jay Rosales from uh, That's a Rap and Raptors HQ and CBC and CP24, uh, you know, dropping a bunch of cool facts on us. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you're new to this podcast or you want to help us, in any way mm-hmm. uh, that sounded weird, but um, you know, the regular, <laughs> regular podcast stuff. What do people need to know, Maddie D? Well, you know what, as I say, go to dunkspodcast.com. We've got all our links and stuff there. Uh, I noticed a few of our links are, you know, like, look, websites aren't my forte. I do what I can, but Uh-oh. for some reason, our social media uh links there like we've got these little icons for instagram and youtube and twitter and there it's like we took that skateboard deck of decals mm-hmm. and we hit a bee's nest mm-hmm. and now they're just flying all over the place so oh wow <laughs> put some honey on your your mouse finger and that should help get you to the ones that are floating around weirdly uh, wow <laughs> you can you can also just go to our like Instagram and our Twitter, we've got Linktree set up so you can go to our Patreon if you would like to support us, if you'd like to hear the podcast on the day that we record as well. Freddie's got some hot sauce, I'm sure, in the fridge. I still got a couple bottles of his hot sauce uh, that I, I go in between, Mark's Rosé and a Splash of OG. Excited for the next one. Uh, hopefully it's a Gary Trent Jr. Or uh, honestly, hopefully it's a Baines hot sauce. Let's be honest. Yeah, it'll hopefully be you a guys Baines are sauce Blast sure. of Baines or something. <laughs> Blast of Baines, pretty good name. <laughs> um, bolder than Baines, who knows? Um, yeah. Maddie well, D. I should say the Sonar Network. God, I always, I forgot our podcast network. Go to the sonarnetwork.com and you can uh, listen to some great podcasts there as well as our own. Ready? Damn right. Uh, Maddie D, you're the goddamn best. I didn't know where your skateboard <laughs> decal analogy was going. <laughs> I'm glad it was a weird image of a Picasso B honey mouse <laughs> thing. <laughs> but uh, I, I also um, I'm curious about these links. Last <laughs> week you said they were twitchy. Yeah. So I wonder if they're changing structure still, <laughs> or if it's just a new way for you to describe the glitch. I don't know if the glitch is evolving into something else. Yeah. Okay. It's just looking more chaotic. The, or did I check on it? So, yeah, um, my wife's a web designer. I'm going to have to get her help a little bit. I think yeah. to calm them down. <laughs> and if we have a broken GIF where someone's mouth is opening and it looks <laughs> horrific, cheers to us. We're doing our best. Join our Patreon. Help us out. You know. Um, oh, yeah, we're, we're we're having a good time. Uh, you're you're amazing, Maddie D. This this pod's fun. Yeah. I think before we um, you know uh, dive into Raptors talk. Yeah, uh, we we gotta we gotta get accountable here on on this pool you set up this yes 2021 playoff pool uh, for anyone just tuning in uh, not following along what we've done uh, you know to put our money where our mouth is is Matt made an Excel spreadsheet where we ranked all 16 playoff teams one to 16 uh, to see who made it the furthest and like every win counts so yeah um, here we are uh, at the finals. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Maddie D's up 842 to 836. Uh, yep. If you're wondering about the point system, it's kind of like valued based on where you put the team. Yep. Uh, how are you feeling about this, Maddie D? 
looking like if Phoenix wins, you win, right? Yeah, it, that this is what the pool comes down to. It's kind of crazy that that it has come down to this, but the Bucks win, you win. The Suns win, I win. That's that's it. There's no other mathematical equation that can, uh, you know, uh, have one of those teams losing and the other person winning. So, yeah, I'm rooting hard for the Suns. I am a bit nervous that this is looking like a home at home series where the away team is not winning. So, uh, obviously, the Bucks have to do that. Mm-hmm. But and this is what I kind of feel like is going to happen. I feel like this series could go to seven, and I feel like the Bucks could win it in seven. I think you could hey. take it in that last game. I uh, I said originally my call was uh, Bucks and seven against the Clippers when it was the new finals. I said Bucks and seven. Uh, mm-hmm. Although that was looking pretty bad early on, but it seems like you know Giannis is going full like juggernaut from X Men mode. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which is he, insane that he had a, a hyperextended knee and he's playing like this. Wild. Because um, I don't know if you saw, but Chris Bosh came on and said, "Look, I've had a hyperextended knee. He's done for the playoffs." That's what he yeah. said. And then he probably was watching that, and he just like. <laughs> punched his TV and he said, no Bosch. <laughs> <laughs> you Giannis was watching and he punched yeah. the TV. And he's sitting down. He yeah. punched it from really far away. Why does Giannis um, have a cast on his off throwing hand there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, he, he, he <laughs> said punch the TV and he said, no Bosch. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, you could check in on, on our pool here. Yeah. Um, go to YouTube, check out the spreadsheet. See Next year. We're, we're definitely going to open it up. I think, right. Yeah. You know, get a bunch of people in here. Maybe if, if you're a listener, uh, and that's something you're interested in, hit us up because uh, we could do fun big pool where um, yeah. we actually have to, you know, put some of our opinions to the test, which is kind of important in a in an analyst driven yeah. podcast world. Yeah, it's crazy to see uh, how right you were about the Bucks and how wrong you were about the Suns. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I was. Uh, I wonder who I was the most wrong about. I think it was the Lakers. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, we were both. Well, we both had the Lakers ranked the exact same, so um, they should not have been ranked higher than tenth or eleventh. Yep. Um, Which is pretty wild. Well, here we are. You know, uh, I think let's uh, let's get moving on this pod here. But um, before we yeah. jump into the actual pod, uh, I mm-hmm. will say uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, stop Asian hate, defund the police, and of course, email your city councilors, call your city councilors. We can create change. You just uh, got to be annoying to do it. Uh, cool. I think we are good to get this podcast rolling. Maddie D, if you feel like we're ready to go, please just give me those sweet words. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get going here with guest number one, longtime friend. Uh, we actually went to high school together. He's a hilarious dude, an amazing stand up. Uh, you know, he knows everything about, honestly, a lot of sports. I don't think he's a Lakers fan, but I mostly hope he's not a Lakers fan. I know he cares a lot about the rappers, regardless. Give it up as loud as you can, even if you're at home alone, for Matt Alexander Henry. Hey. This is your music, which I feel like fits your background pretty well. I like it. By the way, like a wrestler. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty wrestler friendly. I was just gonna say, by the way, your background looks like either you got a tons of packs of smokes or like a bunch of gold bars. (laughs) Um, (laughs) they are worth less than both of those actually um but they're not pop vinyls um i got a bunch i got some basketball ones over there it's mostly nerdy stuff but um yeah they're my pops i look like a store um <laughs> good man right. you're looking like a store you're nerding yeah. out this is the exact place where you belong i think oh man i love it every time i've done this uh this part's always been excellent so you know let's make it happen again yeah buddy um yeah, let's just, I mean, I know we all want to talk rap, so let's uh, let's bring on guest number two. Uh, he's amazing. He's also done the pod, uh, I think, probably the same amount of times as uh, as you, Henry, and uh, he's awesome. You'll see him on CP24. 
uh cbc uh, obviously that's a rap pod uh with another friend of the pod jason lung and uh yeah give it up as loud as you can even if you're at home alone for jay rosales i love the mellowness of my uh of my intro yeah yours is less wrestling more driving in a casual yeah. way <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me on man can't wait can't wait to talk basketball buddy always always good to have you on um you're always kind of a hitting us with with fun stats uh you know whether it's norm being more similar to steph curry in his mvp year than we realize uh or other cool things you brought to the pod that i can't think of right now but uh, you remember that at all that's great it was a good one it was one of those ones where, where, where you wanted to be like hold on you this can't be correct and then you looked it up and you're like wait yeah i guess i guess it is but anyhow Let's not go too far down the rabbit hole of comparing Norm to uh, Prime Steph. Uh, and let's uh, start talking some Raptors ball. Maddie, good there. <laughs> Maddie, good, sir. I know you're there. Please give me <laughs> your most delicious Aaron Baines, Raptor sounding, whatever. Bobby Webster, sting. Mm -hmm. Meow. Okay, here we are. Uh, talking Raptors. This is what I like to do. Let's go to uh, you first, Henry. Um, and, you know, this is kind of just, I guess it's a general question. <clears throat> uh, a little while back, we had, uh, you know, Siakam Golden State rumors. Um, recently, I read some uh sexton for fred based rumors uh you know mostly speculative uh and then i think today or maybe yesterday uh ben simmons news is coming out uh, the raptors are one of many teams apparently interested and as we know from the raptors this is my big caveat that generally we're incredible at not leaking information so when you hear the Raptors in trade rumors. Generally, it's more of a compliment. However, you know, we know every franchise is doing their due diligence to explore and improve at all times. And with with that, all that meandering aside, Henry, uh, I just want to know if you've heard any trades that actually sound good, or if there's any trades you think might make sense, you know, now or later in the summer. Um, so do you want like the fan in me or do you want, um, the fake analysis guy? You know what I mean? Because obviously certain trades, they look good on paper, but who, can, I don't want Ben Simmons coming here. You know what I mean? And he can, he can stay there. My favorite one right now is, uh, Damian Lillard to Toronto, bro. Like the, that's the fan in me though. That's what I want. Cause yeah. all we need really is, I don't want to say a Kawhi esque star but all the pieces are right there and they just need a a push forward guy and damian lillard he's the guy that it will, will separate them from uh you know fighting for eighth and fighting for first in the east so something like that i think a, a guy who's ready to go ben simmons he comes here if he were to come here that's a lot of work that he obviously has to put in it's like i don't mm -hmm. think uh that's something that we need to be worried about right now. But yeah, bring Dame to Toronto. That's what I. That's what I want. Yeah, that's that. That's well said, and kind of what, what I was looking for with this uh, this question because some people are you know more inclined to you know they they have that itch to try and finagle and like make trades, but you hit something pretty you know like dead on with what i'm thinking right now which is yeah we do have a squad where you know people are calling like siakam like robin or whatever and we need a batman and it's like really hard to just acquire a batman and yeah ben simmons isn't a batman i don't think um no. and you know he's probably another robin so that's like you trying to work in two robins i'm probably going too far with the batman analogies <laughs> here but you know what i mean i think it's yeah I, th I think your idea is right where it's like, yeah, I mean, if we're going to make a move, bring in like an absolute top dog, that's going to like push us into contention, uh, yeah. unless you're more in the, you know, 
I guess, you know, camp of you want to make moves to get a bigger, you know, asset chest for the future. Uh, I'm not really in, in that zone. I think we got a lot of guys under contract right now that are good and right in the middle of their career. Jay, let's, uh, let's go to you. Just, um, I think, you know, Matt, Matt answer, or Henry answered it the way I was kind of looking for, like, you know, you can, you can be a fan, you can be an analyst, you can kind of be in the middle. Where, where are you at? Like, what's something that would kind of spark your curiosity or has now, something that I've seen on the athletic was the opportunity to get Shea Gilgis Alexander. That name for me yeah. really jumps out. The the proposal by I believe it was uh, someone from the Athletic. Let's say it's John Hollander. Mm-hmm. Uh, said that you know you just you throw in the number four pick, add in some salary filler to make the deal work, like an Aaron Baines, who no one cares about. You've already slandered him once already. Which is <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> Two times now. By the way, sh- shouts shouts to Australia for for downing USA yesterday. I know Patty right? Mills. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, OKC has 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 a thing. Sam Presti, his thing is collecting draft picks. So why not give him another draft pick? And that number four pick is it's juicy. I think the the possibility the possibility of a draft pick alone excites Sam Presti. So mm-hmm. you know you dangle that number four pick, and again the Raptors were very lucky to land themselves there. This is what they were kind of gunning for after the All Star break or after the trade deadline. This is what you're going for. You're you're hoping to land number one and get Cade Cunningham, or you're hoping to land a, a Batman to the Robin in, in, in that number four slot, which is possible, or you just get one who's ready right now in SGA. So for me, that 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 trade is something that really gets me going. It's part analyst, part fan. I don't know if I don't think Sam Presley would say yes to it, but at the same time, it's it's juicy enough for me that. It's not something that I would, if I were Sam Presley, I would necessarily hang up right away. I would at least listen. I love it. Um, you know, having a young Canadian too, that's really legitimately exciting and good. I think would, you know, and, and that's no, that's no slander to, to Corey Joseph, to Ken Birch, to Boucher. But I think, you know, Bush, uh, um, Shea has like star potential, right? Um, and, and to come up with that core would be, would just be wildly exciting. And I think, you know, just two quick responses to that. One, you're, you're bang on with, with a Presti, probably not hanging up the phone. And I think your logic's bang on where the Raptors got lucky, uh, have good assets. And I think there's a couple teams that uh, are trying to collect assets and didn't get lucky, namely Orlando, OKC, teams that might not want to punt another year searching for a player that, is of the same value as Suggs uh, or green, you know, and again, I'm, I'm no draft expert. I don't know that that is, I don't know that next year's draft isn't going to be better than this year, but I just think that how much patience does a franchise have, uh, you know, in, 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 in OKC's case, we'll see, we saw it with the process, right? At a certain point, player agents get mad and the NBA intervenes. So I think Presti, you know, might be the right person to call. Um, maybe you call Orlando as well, but if it's Jeff Weltman, he should be scared. So hopefully he hangs up. But uh, yeah, I um, I want to move on to a bit of a silly question, I think. Uh, so Maddie D, would you, would you please come back in uh, the office? I don't know why I'm calling it the office, but <laughs> you're in an office. So that kind of works. <laughs> turn a light on in here. Yeah, turn like a light a on. Rumba. Like, Come on, <laughs> boy. Like, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit stormy here, I'll just say. So if uh, something happens, that's what that's what's going on. Fair enough. Um, we're having a big storms here in, uh, in TO as well. Uh, and I'm just stalling a little bit to find out the name of the new Raptors assistant coach. Trevor His Gleason. Trevor Gleason, um, who was uh, coaching in the uh, uh, NBL and uh, I believe won a championship. Um, last year in the NBL, NBL. Uh, sorry. Oh my, oh my goodness. See, this is, this is why it's amazing to have Jay on here. He's won five championships in the <laughs> NBL. So he's clearly, uh, an extremely, uh, competitive and I would guess creative coach, uh, you know, winning in those types of leagues. There's a lot of things that are unstable 
So uh, as a coach, you need to be really, you know, quite on it um, and have your players on a string. That's all serious stuff. I don't know much about this assistant coach, clearly. Uh, so I wanted to just uh, make this segment fun and imagine what type of celebrity assistant coach, if all of the celebrities, uh, I guess in quotes, uh, were that are alive, were available to put on the Raptors bench. And I will say that often these types of questions, I have a crappy answer. Um, and this time I'm, I'm quite confident in my answer. I got a rock solid one. Uh, maybe I'm setting it up too much, but I think it's a good one. Uh, Matty D, I might go to you first on this. Um, I Whoa. feel like, or oh, did you want some time? No, no, it's okay. I can go first. <laughs> okay. Should, you, should I let the more light come into the room? You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Matty D, you know, if we could have any assistant coach, uh, any famous person, you know, to, to put beside nurse next year, who, who's going to help? Who, you know, who are you bringing in? Um, well, you know, what I think would be great, and I'm taking from a great classic basketball movie uh, starring Whoopi Goldberg called Eddie. Now, <laughs> oh, if you haven't good start. seen Eddie, it's about the New York Knicks' loudest fan who becomes the coach <laughs> of the Knicks. I remember that. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember how it is, but I think she did a pretty good job. Oh, um, man. So if we're going to do that for the Raptors, I feel like I want to go with Nav. I think it's time. I think he's he's put in a lot of time courtside. He could, uh, you know, really, he could give a wealth of experience to Nurse. Mm -hmm. You know, he could be like, well, you know, uh, what Wilkins used to do when uh, <laughs> Stoudemire was, you know, having a fit. You know, he could have lots of insight like that. Or, you know, the, the Kevin O'Neill year, yeah. He did some good stuff with Vince or, you know, like, and then sure, Nick would be sure. like, yeah, yeah, Nav, I get it. I'm so glad you're here. Eddie was a great movie. That's what I'm trying to say. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make Eddie 2 starring Nav. <laughs> Let's make Eddie 2. Matty D will no doubt watch that before Space Jam 1 or 2. Right. Um, because <laughs> he's a big Eddie fan. Uh, Matty, I love, I love this. It works. You know, giving uh, giving Navis flowers, plus also, um, you know, oh, I, I lost my train of thought there. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna say uh, I like that. I like that you sealed the deal with Nurse having like an out loud confirmation <laughs> about like, wow, it really is helpful to have you around. <laughs> Let's say you steal a pitch by imagining a fake Nurse being happy. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Um, let's go to you. Uh, let's go to you, Henry. Who's your celebrity on the bench? Oh, man, I'm so happy with this Eddie reference. Like my, my <laughs> brain just had such a flash. Like I, re you know, when you, you completely forget something and then someone says it. It's like, oh, my God. I do remember that. Um, <laughs> so that is that's definitely the number one pick. I want uh, Snoop Dogg to come and be our assistant coach. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yes. I was, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, man, who like celebrity wise would be annoying? He, I mean, we would. He wouldn't take away too much attention from the team. He's a sports guy. You know what I mean? And I want to be his friend. So I feel like, <laughs> sure. Um, I go to enough games. I sit near the tunnel. If I yell to him enough times, um, he'll be like, you know what, man, you're annoying enough to come and hang out with me. Um, and just be his guy. So, uh, Snoop is my, uh, Snoop is my pick for next for celebrity assistant coach of the Raptors. And if this guy's won five titles, by the way, he's not trying to stay an assistant coach for very long anyways. There's no way. Um, he definitely thinks he's ready for, uh, that spot. And this is just, uh, it's gotta be just a step three stone for him. There's no way I win five rings and then I come up and I want to be, you know, second banana to anybody. It's like, I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a good point. I remember, um, uh, Jerry Stackhouse, uh, when he was with the Raptors wanted to take the G league kind of head coaching path to being a head coach. Yeah. Uh, 
for 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 an NBA team. I think I think he's an assistant with Memphis still. I, I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, he very much was kind of like, you know, open about that and being like, I don't necessarily think being an assistant is always the path to being a head coach. Uh, love your answer. Snoop is, uh, you know, NBA size. So that's always a plus, right? Like players are going to be like, you're six, five, like, you know, you're taller than most point guards. <laughs> um, you'd be, obviously it would be weed friendly, which would be nice. Um, sure. I, I mean, I just imagine everyone else would allowed, everyone else would be allowed to smoke weed because he just, he would be smoking weed period um i think in the games uh so that's wonderful and you know <laughs> as far as like s- secret plays like snoop lion also can come out from time to time uh i can i just say one thing about at snoop dog sure uh you know matt did say that like he is just this huge sports guy one of the weirdest things if you play nhl like nhl 20 or 21, whatever the newest one is, sometimes he just comes in in the second period and starts uh, doing banter with the commentators. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> just like Snoop Dogg's here, and he's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> See, no one... No, that, that's that's also why it's a good choice. We're two for two so far, because Nav, Snoop, no one's upset. Like yeah. It's just like people are happy about it. Um, okay, Jay, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, there is. And... You know, <laughs> there's some solid answers. answers. You could be a heel, you know, maybe it's a celebrity <laughs> nobody likes, like a canceled person, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't compete with those. Those are excellent assistant coaches. I would actually, I, I took this, you know, I always try to think about like the team camaraderie part of it, right? And yes. I envision the celebrity assistant coach to help with keeping the team up right and keeping them positive Mm -hmm. because nick nurse is is all about let's let's drive home what's the next play what's going to help the team i want this assistant coach to be the most positive person the person who can help you out through anything so i went with tony robbins oh my god i was hoping you did tony robbins i was like this guy can can make me do anything anything he can make me do anything so yes if I want that positive voice on the on the bench, yo, I'm going. I'm going Tony Robbins. I, I can't. I gotta say, I love the two choices before this. I, I would have gone with either. And, and yes, <laughs> I actually my initial thought was to go the Eddie route as well, and actually just say Whoopi Goldberg. But uh, I went with positivity, and let's go with uh, Tony Robbins. Okay, That's freaking huge. We are three for three here. <laughs> Tony Robbins is absolutely the, like you followed up. Like that's like that was Giannis's game three. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, that was big. I like also Tony Robbins just makes me laugh. He's got big hands. He can for sure palm a ball. Uh, and if you if you haven't watched the Tony Robbins documentary, please do. There's a part in it where every, he talks to the camera about how every morning he jumps in a like a very narrow but deep ice cold pool to wake up. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he just, he shows it to the camera. He's like, this is what I do every day. And he jumps in this like ice cold chamber. So <laughs> cheers. <laughs> All right. Uh, now the pressure's on me and, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like this is the best joke segment because <laughs> my guy is not going to disappoint either. Uh, NBA players know him. They love him. Uh, they're wowed by him. All celebrities love him. In fact, uh, you want to hang out with him. He's mysterious. He, you know, would be treated much like Kawhi is, I think, if you were an assistant coach. The one, the only, Street Magic's own David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You got David Blaine on the bench in the Gatorade bottles. Maybe you have, like, champagnes and frogs. Uh, he could stall. He could do the Jason Kidd thing where it, for stalling, he could just start puking, like... Or like he could like breathe fire. Also, it's like magic, right? So he could cheat to win the game, I think. Uh, anyways, yeah. And I'll throw this in. He probably knows how to make flubber work. So <laughs> yeah, I, the, my answer was a lot. But uh, <laughs> David Blaine is the answer. And, and I'm quite Man. happy with it. He I mean, he's all good endurance now, right? Like that's his big thing, so... We would save so much on halftime shows, number one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. 
And on it, I could see him. You know how there's always, uh, especially college games, there's a guy who's in the back, maybe with a big sign in the crowd. If he was stood back there and started doing tricks with cards or he made things disappear, like he'd be a great distractor uh, at the line, oh. doing stuff on the sideline, saying, hey, man, look at this. And now I'm running down the court and I'm wondering how did he pick my card? I'm not focused on defense. <laughs> yeah, right now. exactly. <laughs> and I think but he's he got. told me to think it. He's got, he's definitely has like, like secret videos of tricks he's done to NBA players where they like, you know, shat themselves or something because yeah. he can just hold that over the head. Like, Hey, I'll release this video if you don't shoot out for 10 from three today. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. there you go. He's got some, uh, some compromat, some compromised <laughs> material, uh, on, yeah. on every NBA player for sure. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, I think we just got to keep the energy going here because uh, this this segment was perfect. We might have to go back to it another time. Celebrity <laughs> assistant coaches, <clears throat> but uh, I think b- before we jump to the next segment, uh, we're just going to let you hear uh, from our sponsors on a little break here and now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt, that was kind of a weird throw, but just in case we get the ad space, yeah. got to do it. Okay, Maddie. <laughs> If you're ready uh, and you're there, I know you're there. Please give me your most delicious sounding Adam Silver Foghorn Leghorn thing. This one's for Australia. This thing goes out to the top undrafted player in Raptors history, Aaron Bynes. I got some water in me because I know that one's a long sting. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, is that a bathroom break sting? Yeah, that's a bathroom break. If you hear the beginning <laughs> of the Australian anthem on this pod, you know you have a couple minutes to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, you know, we who knows how many more of those we get, right? Exactly. Um, shout out to Baines. I do believe he got hurt in the USA Australia game. Hope he's okay. Oh. <laughs> I know we're really. I hope he, you know, doesn't look for aggregates on his name. You know what I mean? Because he'll be like, I'm hurt, and why are these guys still making fun of me? Uh, it's not nice, really. We're not nice. Let's uh, let's go to you, Henry. Uh, I want to, you know, switch gears a bit, talk some NBA, and uh, you know, there's rightfully a lot of talk about Chris Paul um, getting potentially that, like, that, uh, you know, cherry on the cake. Uh, title after 16 years in the league it seems like he's a the type of player who should have a title when it's all said and done uh and then obviously Giannis, who's young but uh you know this is part of his like kind of you know part of his takeover narrative i guess however i think phoenix and milwaukee are both like just chalk filled with interesting guys who've had you know cool journeys throughout the NBA. And I think there's a lot of like fun first title potential. Uh, so I'm curious to, to see who you guys, you know, think of that, that, that isn't Chris Paul. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think a couple guys on the bucks ha- have titles. So, you know, maybe George Hill, uh, Bryn Forbes. I don't know who else honestly has titles from, from either team. Um, it's probably somebody I'm not thinking of, but, uh, yeah, let's go to you, Henry. Um, who, who, who's someone who you'd like to see win a title um, from either team? The better Lopez brother is about to uh, – he's so close. You know what I mean? Like, I like that guy. I hate Brooke Lopez. I hate the other one. And it, there's really no real reason for it. But Wait, you uh, hate Brooke? Uh, yeah, I like – Because like Brooke, Brooke's the one. But who's, on, who's on the Bucks right now? That's the Lopez I like. It's, that's that's Brooke. Lopez. That's Brooke. So that's the one I like. Robin Lopez, I don't know. He uh, – he has that like Joe King Noah vibe for me. Like if he's not on your team, you hate his guts kind of thing. Um, but you know this Lopez, I, I like him, and he he's been in the league for so long. Let him get a ring. But um, out of everybody, like let CP3 get this, bro. You know what I mean? Like he's he's come too far. Giannis has so much time left, um, and CP3 like he he's 
you can put him in your greatest point guard of all time if you want, if he wins a ring. Like, now it's almost undeniable that he's uh, he, he's in my top five anyways. But, I mean, now you can put him in that top three, top two if you want for his position. But, uh, no, give me Lopez. Let him win a ring um, if uh, CP can't win it. Lopez is a great answer and uh, always happy to welcome a, a, a little um, – some 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 twin based digs on this pod. So uh, Robin Lopez, Henry saw you attacking mascots throughout the league. He didn't think it was a fun bit. Okay, I didn't. I didn't either. I've been a mascot. It's hard work. So if you're gonna attack us, you know it's padded, but we still feel okay. Um, shout out, you know, but Brooke Lopez was exactly the type of person I was thinking for this answer. What a career he's had, right? Like, you know, be, he's been the face of a franchise. You know, he also was able to defeat the Nets, uh, you know, on the way to this final. So I, I think he was one of the guys I was thinking of when, when I asked this question. Um, Jay, what about you? Who's who's another guy? It can it can also be Brooke uh, for you. That's fine. No, I'm going I'm going off the cuff here. Um, so on the Phoenix Suns coaching staff. I'm going to bring Ooh. up Mark Bryant. So Mark Bryant had a fairly decent NBA career. Uh, his, I guess his high as a player was in his first couple of seasons. He played for the Portland Trail Blazers in the late 80s, early 90s. So he made two finals appearances with the Blazers. He lost. He oh. probably thought, you know, I'm young. I'm like 21. I've gone to two NBA finals already. I've, I've got my chance. He never made it to the finals since. He never made it as a player after that, after that loss to the Bulls in the 92 finals. And he's been an assistant coach for 15 years. He's helped to develop players along his journey. So he started off in Orlando in 2005 as an assistant coach, moved over to the then Seattle Supersonics in their final year before they went to OKC. So if you think about those two teams, he's helped to develop players like Dwight Howard, Serge Ibaka, Kevin Durant, he's helped to develop all of them, and all of them have become champions, except for him. So he's finally here, almost 30 years after he made the last finals with the Blazers against those Bulls, and he can finally win a championship. So um, the players, past and present, have credited him with helping them get their games to where they're at. Like DeAndre Ayton recently said that he credits Mark Bryant with getting him to where his game is at currently. So I want to give it to Mark Bryant. I think he's uh, he's kind of deserved it. He's kind of just laying in the cut. No one really talks about him. No one even knows he's on that staff, but he's kind of paid his dues and I, I hope he gets one and I think he will. Man, what, what a cool answer. Uh, you know, I, I was... I was limited to players in my head, but so I'm I'm glad that you didn't you know take any limitations with my question, and I think that's a such a good answer because you think about or I often think about somebody's NBA journey ending when when their playing career is done, but this is you know ball is life right so I think for a lot of these people you know may, maybe they're like yeah I'm gonna go be a part of a chain of restaurants or whatever but some people are like no I'm Basketball is who I am. So even if I'm, you know, look at, look at Jamal McGlure, right? You know, the big cat for us, he had a really, you know, cool journey, you know, through the Raptors and like, clearly like, that's just the part of the fabric of who he is. So yeah, I mean, I wasn't thinking about it before, but I, I will be very happy for Mark Bryant. Um, my answer is, is a player. Uh, it's, uh, it, you, I, I, it was Brooke Lopez actually, but it was my backup was PJ Tucker. Uh, I think PJ Tucker is is the type of player who just never gave up and he went overseas and he played, you know, I'm not going to list all the different teams and countries he played for or played in rather, but you know, we know that, uh, you know, drafted by the Raptors, uh, you went to, uh, you know, Phoenix was the, the place that gave him the chance, came back with the Raptors and kind of like a big trade and we couldn't sign him. We went with Chris Paul, uh, which is I also think is cool. And, um, you know, toughed it out in Houston. And I think around that time, people could tell like, oh, wow, this is a guy that can help you complete a title. But the way the league works, Harden 
and Dan Tony were both out uh, and they ended up in the same place trying to win a title together. And, and a guy like Tucker is kind of collateral damage in that scenario, but he managed to get traded to a, a contender. And I think he's really making the most of it. You know, he deed up Harden in the, in, in the net series. Uh, and I, I think he was, you know, really good against Atlanta. And he happens to be playing against Phoenix. So he's just the type of person who I think seems like he should win a title and, uh, you know, won't ever be like, like the, a, a superstar or won't make the hall of fame, anything like that, but like deserves a title. I mean, many, many players deserve it, but for the sake of this question, he, he was my, he was my choice. Um, yeah. Uh, if you guys have anything to add, that's cool. But if not, uh, I got another fun question for you to, to close out, uh, this baby before we go to quickish questions. Is Let it me... true? Is it true that uh, PJ Tucker, who has, I think it's, I saw some stat, and I don't know how accurate it is. You guys can say whether or not this is true, but he as has f- uh, just under five thousand career regular season points over his whatever thirteen year career. Is it true he actually has more pairs of shoes than career points? <laughs> that is I've, amazing. I've heard that too. He has wow. over five thousand pairs or something like that. I know I've he has heard a ton, that too. But... Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, I feel like uh, if you're if you're checking this out on YouTube, Henry has at least half of those shoes right behind him. <laughs> hey man, we're out here. <laughs> we're out here. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to keep know? up, man. Yeah, that's right. All, they're all pops back here, man. We're 100. Yeah, I'm man. We're, the, we're, we're and uh, that's that's a that's an awesome fact. I think uh, we'll we'll see if we can double check that for for next pod, but. I definitely trust you, and I, I do know that he's like a a big time shoe collector. Like I know he's he's pretty nuts for shoes. Um, yeah. Let's uh, not sure who I was going to go to, but let's let's go to you, Jay. Um, and yeah, this is kind of like pretty open ended question too. But uh, we all know it's a copycat league. I think during the G State era there was a very particular type of team mold that teams were going for to try and beat G state or compete against them rather Uh, as you know, the league's stylistically changing. It's faster. Uh, There's a ton of threes. Um, Last year there was Lakers versus the heat. And there was a little bit of like, Oh no, let's all, let's all focus on our big men just in case we play Lakers in the finals. Um, And yeah, it's pretty common actually that that happens. So I'm wondering uh, what you think might happen with uh, with the Bucks style of play with their players, uh, or with the Phoenix style of play and their players, like how it might affect the league. You know, not necessarily a specific team example, but like just just a general vibe. Yeah, I, I took this question with a very much Raptorsy lens, and I see all the love and all the flowers being thrown at CP3, and I I see this as huge for the Raptors and Kyle Lowry. I see this as, you know, teams and players and fans are valuing CP3 more now than they've ever valued him, I think. You know, you, you yes, he was in those conversations of top five point guards of all time, but I feel like you're now you're hearing it more from like the bandwagon fans, or the, the, mm-hmm. just the general fans. You hear it more now. And what that means for Kyle Lowry and the Raptors is, Okay, well, if more people are valuing someone like a CP3, a uh, a veteran point guard leader to lead your team to the the promised land, then that probably hikes up the value of Kyle Lowry this offseason, right? So if the Raptors were to try to work out some sort of a sign and trade, all of a sudden his value is better now than it was possibly at the trade deadline. So Mm -hmm. that's the Raptors answer I've got for you. And the other thing I like about the Suns is the the rising of of Mikael Bridges, and I love the, this guy's play. I love the way he plays. He's he's your 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 prototypical three and D guy, and you know the amongst Raptors Twitter, what you're you're hearing and reading is that he's basically OG and Obi on on Phoenix, and that I mm-hmm. like that because again that raises the profile of what Toronto has, and I'm looking at this again in the Raptorsy lens, and that is free agents who look for places that look like what phoenix has in terms of they've got a veteran point guard they've got uh yeah. outstanding wing defenders that are both two-way the raptors have that yeah they don't have a deandre ayton um but all the other components are there right so 
I don't I don't think I really answered your question in terms of what other other teams could copy here, but I do like what Phoenix has. I do like that Toronto Raptors have something kind of similar. And I think that this is going to possibly be the pl- blueprint for other teams uh, to copy. No, I, th- I think it was a really good answer because these teams, you know, were not, it wasn't like, you know, this isn't the Lakers versus the Nets, right? So we're having a lot of like kind of casual fans and, and people who didn't watch these teams, you know, weren't really like hadn't registered that Phoenix had the second best record in the NBA this year, you know, Stuff like that. Like when the Raptors won the championship, they had the second best record in the NBA. And a lot of people were like, who is this team? And I think that's like part of how, you know, NBA fandom works. And that's why I wanted to bring this up because I feel like these two teams aren't necessarily focal points. So I'm wondering what the takeaways will be. And and an interchangeable guy like Bridges is a great example, I think. Um, Henry, what about you? Like, you know, what when you're seeing these teams... (laughs) What are you thinking? You know, obviously the Chris Paul Lowry, I think, uh, you know, the game manager uh, makes sense. Like, yeah, maybe if you're a team uh, like a veteran or a team or sorry, a team that has a lot of young talent, you're kind of like, wow, what may, maybe bringing Lowry in can actually tie a lot of things together. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to answer the question for you, but uh, no, yeah. well, what, do you, what do you think, Henry? I understand because you got to like you have to think that the Lakers are kicking themselves for not having. Kyle Lowry on their team for the playoffs, man. Like they, oh, yeah. they probably could have pulled the trigger on something and didn't. And now, you know, you're in a panic, but um, I think it would be hard to um, say who is going to, how to copy these two teams in particular, because they're, I don't want to say CP3 is the, like the main point of Phoenix, but he's a critical part and he's a generational talent. And Giannis is a generational talent. Yeah. So it's it would be really hard to mimic something like that. But if anything, um, especially in the case of the Bucks, you gotta you gotta draft, bro, and you gotta kind of do what it takes to make your stars happy. Um, like because Giannis is there for a couple more years now, and just at the beginning of this year, you know, we were talking about him coming to the Raptors. Quite frankly, him going anywhere but Milwaukee, right? So. Um, if you can, so that's why when the conversation about Fred was happening, Fred Van Fleet uh, getting traded, I don't want to trade Freddie. You know what I mean? He's uh, I don't want to say he's a generational talent. He's he's going to get really good. Uh, yeah. In a in a system that it's it just it just is going to take time. You know what I mean? And he's a guy who you're going to want totally. on your team um, for such uh, such an event, right? To go deep. So I don't know how um, they're going to mimic, but if anything. Uh, you know, you want to keep your veterans happy, keep your stars happy, uh, because you never know when things are going to break your way and you kind of just have to be ready for it. Devin Booker is flames. You know what I mean? Like, he's coming. Yep. Um, so Phoenix is going to stick around for a long time, even after um, Chris Paul leaves, and hopefully they do the right thing and buy Devin Booker and give him whatever money he's asking for, because I think that's, uh, that's the key right there. Henry, well, well said. Like, my answer uh, is not as good as yours because it was basically half of yours. I I was just going to say that I think, you know, you look at the length of the Bucks uh, and the drop down defense they're playing with Lopez and it's not exactly repeatable, but for all the critiques around Bud, I think at least for the regular season and, you know, for before you have to adjust, he's made something that, uh, is very much based around his team skill set and you know repeatable and the baseline's not super low. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, let's say Bucks lose in five or something. And we're, we're recording right before Game Four. You know that obviously won't be true at all. But the the take about keeping your stars happy is like the completion of of my half take because that is it, it's a perfect answer because you know you think about what they did with, with holiday and, and with Middleton and re-signing Giannis, it's like, they did it. And then also Phoenix, but you know, I, I know they had, I think Booker a little bit locked up already, but you know, think about what, what happened with, with CP three. Yeah. They're going to the finals. This is amazing. It's a magical year, but the dividends from that are like, who knows, right? You're probably going to get all those guys that made the finals that are, that are young with Phoenix. Like, 
by acquiring Paul, you maybe even solidified the bond between Booker and Aiton for their careers. So I think actually that's yes, that, that's the perfect answer I was looking for because these are the types of residual you know, things I think maybe you can take from this, from this finals, because also to your other point, it is hard to say, Oh, well, we'll just design our system around this generational talent. It's like, we have to get one of them first, (laughs) you know, or, or get a guy like Fred and OG, like humming in your system so that you're in place to get one of those guys. But, uh, yeah, I want to get uh, silly again. So let's let's do some quickish questions. Um, Maddie D, I know you're back there. Please, good sir, give me that quickish questions. Sting. Quickish questions. Da, 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 da. I am such a loser. No worries. Uh, okay. Um, this is quickish questions. I'm going to stutter. I'm going to slur. I'm going to misread a comma. Perhaps other reading based mistakes may happen. That's okay. You have to answer as quickly as you possibly can. No stalling, no delaying. Uh, Matt. As quickly uh, you as know, you possibly can? Yeah, as quickly as you possibly can. Oh, he's looking for, he's got a little. See, Matt's always trying to bend the rules of the game. You know, he repeats the question. He makes a joke. I, I feel like me saying quickly as possible. I've already made a mistake with the word possible. <laughs> but that's okay. He's in my head. Rent free as usual. Uh, let's do Henry J. Matty D. Uh, are we ready? Let's go. Okay. Uh, Henry. Predict the starting lineup of the Raptors for opening night. Um, Fred, um, and then we'll go Kyle, um, like that, maybe OG, (laughs) oh man, this is hard, um, Gary, oh, Gary Trent Jr. is going to come off the bench, uh, giving you three, right? So give me, um, Baines. (laughs) Baines. <laughs> Baines is coming back. I think I think he comes back. Um, I'm not sure who that fourth one is. That's a hard one. Siakam? Oh, hurt. yeah, there you go. And Pascal. Who's That's hurt? Too. Did he um, get surgery? Yes. Yeah, he'll yeah, be out till yeah. November. That, that was a tricky one. You threw some curveballs. Lowry's coming yeah. back. Baines is coming back. Uh, <laughs> Run <let's> it back. <laughs> okay, Jay. Um... Do you believe Ben Simmons can develop uh, better shooting? Yes. Um, that's why Nick Nurse has the pill, right? I mean, that's that's what the ball is for. I, I, I will actually question what the development system is like in Philadelphia. We don't hear rave reviews about it. We do hear rave reviews about it in Toronto. So while I'm on the fence and I agree with some of you guys that it's questionable how if he could develop here, I do think so, actually. I think that that shot can come around because everything else he brings is pretty damn awesome. So if he were to come here and the only thing you got to worry about is shooting, I'd be down for that. And I do think that that shooting is fixable. If Let's compare him to the Raptors lineup. He is... There are only four Raptors currently on the Raptors that are younger than him. Four. Wow. So... That can develop. Yeah. I like it. Faith in uh, faith in Big Ben. Um, Matty D. Yo. Where should DeMar go? <clears throat> I think DeMar should go to the Lakers. I think he should be able to go home. Compton boy. Yeah, play for hometown team. And I, I think that he would be... He'd be a nice agile option for for that that old team of vets. <laughs> yeah, great answer and keyword agile. I think yeah. people always underestimate you know Demar's craftiness and willing to you know fit in with other players. Yeah, uh, when people say hometown, they already don't say the Clippers. Like it's it's yeah. the Lakers town, right? <laughs> yeah, like no. hometown does not mean. <laughs> yeah, it sorry, never Clips. Mean the Clippers. <laughs> Clips, listen. <laughs> Were you once an imposter, always an imposter, right? <laughs> um, Henry, how can the Bucks beat the Suns? 
Um, it's another home game. They can just even play like they played, uh, you know, two nights ago, um, and tie the series up. And it, it's it's an even it's an even uh, it's an even setup. Uh, they're at home. Take advantage of playing at home. Take advantage of your crowd. And I think that's exactly how you win and you tie it up. Damn and right. Take it from there. Get those Cheryl Crow tunes blaring. Oh yeah. Um. Jay, how can the Suns beat the Bucks? I think this is like, if you watch tennis, I liken this to tennis, where like, sometimes you win with winners, and sometimes you win just by waiting for the opponent to make errors. And I think the Bucks are more prone to make errors. The error mm. can be anything. It can be, okay, let's let Giannis score 50 points, but Middleton shoots two for 17. And Drew Holiday has eight turnovers. Maybe it is Mike Budenholzer messing up Giannis's minutes again. I feel like the Bucks are more prone to errors, and the Sun just do what you do. Chris Paul keep picking away at that pick and roll. When they when they drop back on D, then you you light them up from the free throw line. When they come up on you, find a find a, a roller. So like, I think the Sun just they they just play their game. They're fine. The Bucks will screw this up. Uh, I like it. Yeah, just play it safe. And shout out to Matty D. When you when when the beat stopped, you said come up, and he kicked it back in. So <laughs> that was cool. Um, or maybe I'm still just a loser. Last quickish question. Uh, last question of the pod, Matty D. Yes. Is international basketball catching up for real, or is it just a weird Team USA? I think that uh, let's enjoy it while it's uh this feeling is all around us with the exhibition losses but i think when it starts to mean something uh usa will probably go back to winning I, wow. that's what I think so. but i do yeah i do think international ball it's coming whether you like it or not it's uh it's a shame you can't just be happy for aaron baines maddie d can't be happy for that <laughs> um, guy. poor guy you know uh okay that's uh that that's it for the pod uh we made it to the end. Thank you so much for everyone who's been listening and supporting and, uh, you know, shouting us out and all that good stuff. Let's, uh, let's see what everyone's up to. Um, Henry, uh, I see you're, you know, you're doing shows, stuff's going down. Uh, oh. people need to laugh right now. They want to go out and do stuff. So, um, yeah, it's actually exciting for me to, to let people know <laughs> things they can actually physically do now. Um, so what's up? Um, I'm back. I'm doing, hitting the mic for the first time in months on Saturday. I've been doing these Zoom shows. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash comedian Matt Henry. You'll get all my, uh, as soon as I get the dates, I'll let you guys know the dates. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. Nice. Uh, trying to ease back in um, and get a groove going because I am out of it right now. I have been sitting in front of uh, these these toys doing literally nothing talking. <laughs> I've been doing stand up like this, so uh, it's gonna be great to get back out on stage so I can sit down there and uh, do my thing. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be very rusty. Uh, what I uh, I'm Did back you have to a boat doing show lock. coming up, Fred. Um, I I'm actually going on vacay, so the 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 show I had booked. Oh. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna be there anymore, but it's still gonna be a hot show. Check it out. It's a uh, the comedy by mm -hmm. the river. Uh, we've got Martha Chavez, uh, Marito, and Rob Bebnick. It'll be, it's a hot lineup. Yeah. But, uh, Jay, what's up? Uh, what are you doing? What do you want people to know? Yeah, you can follow me. Uh, you know, you see it on the screen there, Rosalosaurus on Twitter. And the weekly podcast that, that I co-host is called That's a Rap Podcast. We record every Friday, and usually it comes out Friday night or even Saturday morning. So... Yeah, that's that's really at me. And then I occasionally will write on Raptors HQ. Um, so check out my writing over there. I don't think I have anything in the hopper right now. But um, yeah, that's where you can catch me. And again, thanks for having me on. This is fun, as usual. Oh, man. Happy to have you on. Happy to have you on, too, Henry. Um, definitely check out That's a Rap Pod. Uh, it's one of my favorite. And if you're a hardcore Raptors fan, it's like it's a must listen. So um, yeah, that uh, takes us to the end of the pod. Again, thank you so much, everybody. Maddie, if you feel like we're good to go and sign off, please just give me those sweet words. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh.
This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar!